When you first start learning astrology for yourself, one of the absolute first things you need to do is create and read your natal charts. This video is going to show you how to do that using astro.com, which is an astrology website you can use for free to create a variety of astrology charts. I do not recommend using any apps to create your natal chart. None seem to be accurate for chart placements thus far, so they can be fun to play with, but definitely not for use if you want to get serious about astrology. Okay, so first you go to astro.com. Uh, this is what it looks like currently on a desktop or laptop computer. In the upper right corner, you can see it says My Astro. When you click on that, it'll give the options User Profile or Login. Login is for if you have an account. Uh, with an account, you can save charts. User Profile takes you right to creating a chart. And you can create an account if you want one. This is what it should look like on mobile. Here you'll hit the hamburger icon and my Astro will be the first in the list of options. Uh, tap on that and user profile and login are available. Tapping on user profile, this is where it takes you. It looks about the same on a desk desktop or laptop. Uh, you see you can create an account or create charts as a guest user. I'm just going right to creating a chart as a guest user. There's a pop-up about data privacy. There's another pop-up, but it already popped up before I started recording and clicked out of that. So, you know, just click accept, you know, these things. Uh, you're now on the birth data entry page. Here you'll put in your name date of birth, place of birth, and time of birth. Now, I never use the last name field, so don't worry about that. And gender selection doesn't matter for creating charts, so don't worry about that either. I'm just using random info for this. When you type in the town, options will pop up, as you can see, uh, for you to select. They have a good amount of locations available in the database, but if you were born somewhere super remote, you may need to choose an adjacent town that's a little bigger. I also don't bother with extended settings, so don't worry about that either. Just click continue. This brings you to the free horoscopes page. Chart drawing ascendant, extended chart selection, and create an ephemeris are at the top. Select extended chart selection. In extended chart selection, there are a lot of options. Natal chart wheel is already selected in the drop down menu for chart type. In options for zodiac and houses, you can change the zodiac and house system used. The default for astro.com is the tropical zodiac and Placidus house system. I usually encourage you to play around with that when you get further along. If you do that now, when you're just starting, it's probably just going to confuse you. In display and calculations options, you can add a few more things and change calculations for some things like progressions, but Again, this is not for beginners, so this isn't something you need to worry about now. In additional objects, you can add asteroids and other hypothetical planets and bodies. There are a bunch in the menu, and you can also find them alphabetically. And you can see there's currently over 20,000 asteroids. And if you already know the number assigned to an asteroid or hypothetical body, you can type them into the manual entry box instead of having to search for it. You're currently limited to 11, but you know, you can create a chart with 11, go back and choose another 11, go back, choose another 11, on and on and on. Now click on, click here to show the chart. And this is what a chart looks like on astro.com. It's a vertical chart with the wheel at the top, 
a table of the location of the planets and houses on the bottom left, a grid of aspects between the planets on the bottom right, and a table just above that of the planets sorted by element and quality. If you prefer it horizontal, you can select landscape in display and calculation options in extended chart selection. Uh, you can also create the chart anonymized so you won't have the name if it's a chart you're sharing. You can see it's right below. Uh, then create the chart and here it is in landscape. In landscape, the wheel is on the right and on the left is the location of the planets and houses and then the table of element and quality and then the aspect grid. Back in free horoscopes, there was also the option for chart drawing ascendant. If you were to click on that instead of uh, extended chart selection, the chart is landscape as well. It's just a little smaller than choosing the landscape option and extended chart selection, and you can't add any of the other stuff to the chart, but you can see it looks about the same. So I'm using the vertical chart to break down how to find the positions. The wheel shows the location of the 12 houses and planets and bodies. It's more visual, so you can quickly see where everything is in the chart. There are 12 houses in astrology, each ruling different parts of our lives. A cusp of a house is the very beginning of that house where it starts. You can see the letters AC, IC, DC, and MC on the outside of the chart wheel. AC stands for Ascendant, IC stands for MM Koali, DC stands for Descendant, and MC stands for Medium Koali. Using the Placidus house system, Ascendant is the first house cusp, MM Koali is the fourth house cusp, Descendant is the seventh house cusp, and Medium Koali is the tenth house cusp. Each black line going from the center to the zodiac signs represents a house cusp. The house begins at that line and ends at the next line. The houses are labeled on the inner part of the wheel. The zodiac sign the line leads to is the zodiac sign the house begins in and is considered the zodiac sign that house falls in. There are dashes all along the circle with the zodiac signs. These dashes represent degrees. Every zodiac sign is made up of 30 degrees, and there are 360 degrees in the zodiac in total. The planets are placed in the wheel where they are located. You can see at a glance their zodiac sign and house location in the wheel. There are blue, red and green lines between the planets in the wheel. These are for aspects. Aspects are when two bodies are at specific distances from one another by degree. Blue lines are sextiles and trines. Red lines are squares and oppositions. And green lines are semi-sextiles and quincunxes. Below the wheel on the left is a location of the 10 planets, as well as the true node, Chiron, and six of the 12 houses. A true node is your north node, which is a spiritual point showing your potential, purpose, and fulfillment in this life. This is not a physical body. Uh, it's the point in the moon's orbit where the moon crosses the ecliptic. Chiron is currently classified as a comet, but in astrology, we usually call it an asteroid. Uh, it's the wounded healer and connects to the wounds you have and how to heal in your life. Now, the table doesn't use the glyphs or symbols for the zodiac sign placements and instead just uses the first three letters of each sign. The number to the left of the sign is the degree placement. 
there are 30 degrees in every zodiac sign, 360 degrees total. Each zodiac sign starts at zero degrees and ends at 29 degrees. The number to the right of the sign with the apostrophe is the minutes placement. And the number to the right of that with the quotation mark is the seconds placement. There are 60 minutes in every degree and 60 seconds in every minute. This gives you the exact degree, minute, and second placement in the zodiac sign the planet is located. Below the planets is the location of six of the 12 house cusps. Only six are shown because every house has a house that is exactly opposite it. So if you know the location of one house, you know the location of its opposing house. All you have to do is change the sign to the opposing sign. The six houses shown are the first house, which is the AC, the second house, which is the two, the third house, which is the three, the 10th house, which is the MC, the 11th house, which is the 11, and the 12th house, which is the 12. Now, the first house opposes the seventh, the second house opposes the eighth, the third house opposes the ninth, the fourth house opposes the 10th, the fifth house opposes the 11th, and the sixth house opposes the 12th. Aries opposes Libra, Taurus opposes Scorpio, Gemini opposes Sagittarius, Cancer opposes Capricorn, Leo opposes Aquarius, and Virgo opposes Pisces. Now, to the right is an aspect grid. Now, it shows the aspects made by the planets to one another, as well as to the true node, Chiron, Ascendant, and Midheaven. The grid has a symbol for the aspect being made. These are the symbols. They show conjunctions, semi-sextiles, sextiles, squares, semi-squares, sesqui quadrates, quincunxes, and opposition. They also show a number and an A or an S. Now the number shows how far apart they are from being exact by degree. And the A stands for applying while the S stands for separating. Applying means the aspect hasn't happened yet. So in the case of your natal chart, it hadn't gone exact yet when you were born. Separating means the aspect already happened so in the case of your natal chart, it already went exact by the time you were born. Above the aspect grid is a table that shows the element and quality breakdown of the planets. There are four elements, fire, which is the F, air, which is the A, earth, which is the E, 
and water, which is the W. Each element has three zodiac signs. There are three qualities, cardinal, which is the C, fixed, which is the F, and mutable, which is the M. Each quality has four zodiac signs. Qualities are also called uh, modalities. Once you know the location of everything in your chart, this allows you to start actually learning about your own placements. So here's a quick rundown of what each planet and house rule. Now the way basic interpretation breaks down is as follows. What is shown via planet? How is shown via sign? And where is shown via house? So your natal planet is what is being expressed. The sign it's in is how it's expressed. And the house it's in is where it's expressed. Aspects the planet makes can alter the way it operates, making it easier or more challenging. The most important parts of your natal chart are referred, referred to as the triad or primal triad, and that's your sun, moon, and rising or ascendant. They are the building blocks for you as a person. Focus on your sun, moon, and rising to know more about yourself. The relationship parts of your natal chart are your natal Venus, planet of love, fifth house, the house of love, and seventh house, the house of relationships. The professional parts of your natal chart are your natal second house of money, sixth house of work, and tenth house of career.